Hi, I'm Lou Smith and I write the Coping with Depression blog for Healthy Place. Today I'm talking about the kind of language that we use to talk about mental health and depression, and also the mental health related language that is a part of our everyday conversation. Maybe you've clicked on this because you've been on my recent blog and you're looking for the answer to the little quiz. If you haven't seen that blog, definitely check it out because on there, I put a few sentences and I ask the readers to think about whether they think any of those sentences might be problematic for someone with a mental health condition. So now you want me to tell you the answer. But the problem is, I'm afraid I don't have a definite answer for you. You could look at all of those sentences and you could just go, hmm, what's wrong with that? Or, hell no, that's really offensive and you should never say that. Some people believe, for example, that we should never even use the word crazy at all. Let's have a look at the dictionary definition of crazy to start with. Are we clear on that? Good. So there are two ways in which the word can be used. The sentence that the parent said to her teenage daughter about being so crazy about One Direction that there's no room left on her wall for any more posters. Well, that should be okay, right? In reality, most people wouldn't have a problem with that. In fact, thinking about my friend's daughter, who actually is a huge One Direction fan, she'd probably think it was a badge of honour. Until she gets older and her musical taste change, and then she might well be really embarrassed about it. The problem is, is that the word crazy is so much associated with mental illness that when you tell someone they're crazy, even in a joking or affectionate way, you're kind of telling them that, A, what they're doing, saying or thinking, is symptomatic of a psychiatric illness, and that, B, that's not a good thing. Or at least, that's what someone with a mental health condition might hear or feel when they hear the words used in everyday conversation, particularly when it's a label being attached to someone. Consider one of the sentences again, the one about crazy Sarah, who's just doing the charity skydive for work. The person who said that he had sponsored for it, and was saying it in an admiring sort of way, but what if you were Sarah and you overheard that? What if Sarah had had depression? Maybe she'd even had time off work for a mental health problem, and she might have thought her colleague was actually calling her crazy. Actually, what Sarah's colleague meant was that she was brave for doing the skydive. So why didn't he just say that? Of course, other things do matter, like your tone, your facial expression and your body language when you say something, and also how well you know the person that you're talking about. It's a lot more difficult when the sentence is written down because you can't judge those things. I'm not saying that we need to wipe out all of these problematic words from the dictionary entirely and we shouldn't be pretending that they never existed. Context matters, so I wouldn't agree that we should, for example, go around changing the names of old films like Psycho. If you think about other words that have now become very taboo in our society, it took a long time for them to die out as part of everyday conversation, because it takes time for language to evolve. That's why I don't agree with some of the groups who will get really nasty online with people because they use the wrong word. It's not helpful to the process of making people think about what they're saying and considering the alternative. If people get abused for making an un unintended mistake, they're more likely to think, well, for you then, I'm going to carry on using it if you're going to be like that. We also don't want to make people scared to talk about mental health because they might use the wrong word somewhere and get blamed on Twitter. My role in this, as someone with depression and mental illness, is to think about where my own boundaries are with language, what I feel comfortable with and what I don't, and I should be able to ask someone politely not to use a word that I find upsetting, and I hope that you would too. It's only like making an effort to swear, not to swear in front of your granny if you think about it. We can all do it if we're conscious of it, and occasionally we might make a little mistake. But I think if someone's crying, we need to be aware of that and cut them a little slack.